Two scores of five in front. One on our three. Lieutenant Adams flicked his visor to IR, confirming the presence of the enemy Quest Talia. Affirmative, he keyed in. Alpha and Bravo swing 50 meters right. Charlie and Delta, 50 meters left. Echo on me. You know what to do. Yes, sir, came the chorus of voices. Adams switched to Echo's private frequency. We're going to get their attention. Who are my engineers, Morgan and Pierce? All right. Morgan and Pierce toss down some mines and withdraw back to defilade. Everyone else, pick a target. You get one burst, then back. Sir, I'm relatively certain we can inflict heavy casualties if we get more than one burst. I understand that, Evans, but we're not looking to inflict heavy casualties at the moment, are we? No, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now pick a target and make sure it's one of the big ones. Sir. Lieutenant Adams checked his map readout as the engineers laid their traps. Looks like his flanks were in position. Squad, fire on the red smoke. Adams pulled the pin off the canister and lobbed it in between the two forces. Three, two, one, pop. Blood red clouds billowed from the purple grass. The trees lit up with muzzle flashes and Adams squeezed a quick burst in the general direction of the oblivious Questalia before sprinting back to cover. The war cry of the Questalia rose as he ran back, the tall grass whipping at his legs. He checked his map readout again. Looked like all three squads were charging him an echo. Good. Twenty seconds later, the war cry changed to shrieks, punctuated by the sound of landmines going off. Adam stove into cover. He exhaled. It was all going to plan. Curiosity got the better of him, and he peeked over cover. The landscape was on fire. Maybe he should have told the engineers to call it a little. There was only a squad and a half left. Morgan, we're going in. Disable the mines. But sir, they're biocoded to us. They won't go off on us. I understand that, Corporal, but at this rate we'd be lucky to have half of Questalia left, and I need at least five whole ones. Yes, sir. Morgan quickly tapped on his wrist comm. Adam switched frequency back to platoon wide comms. All squads attack. Remember, I need at least five of these Xenos alive and in one piece. Preferably the smaller ones. Go! He checked his map readout as he ran towards the Questalia squad. All five squads were converging on the disorientated aliens. Pause up! He screamed into his translator as he burst into the newly created clearing. Down on the ground! The remaining quest Talia happily complied as they were suddenly surrounded by 40 human soldiers who seemed very eager for blood. Lieutenant Adams did a quick head count as his men disarmed them. Alright, there's seven of you, I only need five. Two of you can leave. The quest Talia looked at each other hesitantly. Loyal ones, aren't you? I guess you're going to make me choose. Adams examined the face down prisoners. Three of them were wearing the same marriage beads. Hmm, this could work. He drew his pistol, making sure to rack it for effect. Oh, look, we have some lovebirds. Ain't that cute? You know, I was always kind of jealous of how tolerant you guys are of polygamy. I mean, it sounds great, right? In theory, but I always figured there was one problem. You want to guess? The free quest Talia looked at each other, clearly terrified. Spiritual morality lecture, human, one of them spat. Oh, come on, don't be like that. No, no, this problem isn't to do with morales. The problem is that if there are only three of you, one of you is going to be the least liked. Now, who is it here? Greeny here, or maybe Brave Boy? I mean, if you can get lippy with me, I'd hate to see what you're like normally. Greeny and Brave Boy exchanged a glance, then looked at the pink one. Oh man, you don't mean that the two of you are more gay than bi. Wow, I was not expecting that. Well, either way, both of you get the hell out of here. See if you can make it back to base before I execute Miss Friendzone here. It's the least you can do for her. Adam signalled to his men, ordering them to release the two lovebirds. They both stood up, shooting apologetic looks at their former lover before sprinting into the woods. If you're going to kill me, then go ahead and do it. But let everyone else live at least, said the pink Questalia. Adams laughed. Don't worry, doll. Mind if I call you doll? Don't worry, doll. We need you alive. 
Adam stood addressing his men. Bring these guys back with us to the vehicles. And Mazgon, tell the artillery to hit this sector in 20 minutes. Fire for effect. Zentus was not happy with being left on guard duty. He always got the shitty jobs. Plus, his partner was an idiot. Where is everyone? Zentus sighed. Did you not hear? There were reports of human contact along the western side. They took five prisoners. Corbuck scratched his head. Oh, so why is everyone gone? Zentus sighed but louder. Just take your seat and watch the trees. Nothing's going to happen anyways. As if on cue, five human APCs suddenly burst through the forest. Zenta scrambled to sit up in his turret, tossing his cup of Bray across the room. Shit, I'm gonna have to clean that up later. Korbuk, you better be awake! He screamed as he hit the alarm. Why are you so excited? Korbuk drawled. They'll never make it past the mines, and if they do, the auto turrets will take care of them. They're all biocoded to allow only Quest Talia. Zenta sat back, realizing he was right. Hey, did you just say something smart? Zentus asked. I'm always smart. Yeah, right. Zentus quipped. He sat back in his chair but kept an eye on the approaching forces as something didn't feel right. Early reports of battle with the humans had been that they were cunning and hardy, and charging into certain death didn't feel like something they would do for no reason. Any moment now they'll hit the mines. The humans kept coming. Any moment now. The humans kept coming. They really should have tripped the mines by now. The humans kept coming. They definitely should have blown up by now, Korbuk said. Zentus pushed down his surprise at Korbuk, saying two smart things within five minutes and focused on the incoming APCs. They were within 50 meters of the ship now, definitely within the minefield and the engagement distance of the autocannons. Fuck it, he growled, turning his turret onto the APCs and pulling the trigger. But nothing happened. What the? He pulled the trigger again to no avail. A little notification popped up, reading, Friendly forces detected. This doesn't make sense. Suddenly, the cannons on all five vehicles unleashed a barrage onto the ship, blowing a hole in the side. The human war machines thundered into the ship, leaving an odd sense of calm on the landscape. Zentus keyed the radio. Humans have breached the hull. Repeat, humans have breached the hull. How many of them are there? About five vehicles, so a platoon? Company? What are they going to do to us? We've got hundred times the amount of soldiers as them. As if on cue, the vehicle suddenly burst back out of the hole they had created. Charging across the landscape, they disappeared as quickly as they had come. Oh, uh, they left, said Zentus. Guess they realized their insanity, came reply. Where did they breach us anyway? Zentus surveyed the now quiet landscape. Not sure, on the aft side near the thrusters? Right next to the... Oh, no. Doll, now called Dolly, watched the trees fly by the window of the APC. She was tied to the seat, but at least it was a comfortable one. Across from her sat the lieutenant, Adams. He caught her gaze and smirked. Thanks for coming along, he said. We would have been blown to bits if you and your friends hadn't fought the bioscanners for us. Dolly managed to spit the gag out. So what? Forty soldiers could never defeat four thousand in combat. You were treated as soon as you came in. All you managed to do is plant a bug to get data off our energy systems. It'll be discovered in the next routine maintenance. Adam's smile widened. Oh, we didn't need to get data off your systems, quite the opposite. We needed to upload something onto them. I don't think that your reactor is going to be undergoing routine maintenance anytime soon. Dolly's blood ran cold. No. Would that even work? Oh yeah. Adam stared into her eyes into her soul. The sky outside went bright with the light of the Questalia's ship reactor overloading. Through the din of the explosion, Dolly heard him say, What did you say? Forty soldiers could never defeat 4,000 in combat? Sorry, but we're better at this than you.